He's a good guy. And I'll just make another uh, little comment about Mike Hutchings. Uh, amazing, amazing results that he has seen. He's part of Randy Clark's ministry. So that means they do a lot of conferences every year all around the world. And the testimonies, um, there's one actually posted on our YouTube channel of a, of a soldier of uh, post-traumatic stress, lost all the feeling in, in his, his nerves. He couldn't use his left hand. It was just an amazing testimony of how he just showed up at a Randy Clark meeting and um, you know, couldn't even be around a lot of other people because that was part of the trauma he was experiencing. And he fought through it and he went down and, and Randy pr prayed for him. Um, and over the course of three days, he went from being almost completely disabled from the trauma to being completely healed from the trauma. And one of the things that, if you watch this video, you'll, uh, that's right in the name, PTSD Healed, um, if you're looking on our YouTube channel. He said one of the things was that Mike Hutchings was the one praying for him at the front, and he held this man's wrist, and he's a big guy, the one that got healed. Mike's a pretty big guy, too. But he was, he was holding his wrist like this, and he said, you can't close your eyes, you gotta look me in the eye. <laughs> and as the soldier's telling the story, he's like, I'm a pretty big guy, I think I could take him. But, you know, because that panic was starting to set in from the trauma, and Mike said, no, I'm not gonna let you go until you look me in the eye. Because wow. <laughs> he knows the calling he has, and he knows the anointing that's on his life. And look, you know, we, we, we believe by faith. We're gonna talk about that today, that just shall live by faith. And yes, it's important to live you know, in alignment with the rules of God. We get blessed through obedience. But look, you don't earn the right to be healed, right? God loves you, and, and he wants to just move mightily in all of our lives. So good to see you. Those of you that I can recognize uh, with the mask on, getting better at this. <laughs> We're uh, going to launch into the Word, and I asked Carolyn McCombs if she'd help um, a little bit. Just in a couple minutes, I'll ask her to come up here with me. But uh, the, the word that the Lord gave me for this week was the justice of Jesus. And then it evolved in my, as I meditated on the word, into the eternal justice of Jesus. Because um, that's a big word in our culture today. It's always been a big word for America, uh, justice. And, and that's what I like about this picture uh, of the blindfold and the scales and the need for evidence and the need for us to have a fair system. And, and we're that amazing country that says you are innocent until proven guilty. That is a whole new idea that didn't exist before. It doesn't usually, that would never exist under a dictator because you don't have a lot of rights in a dictatorship. But then we can escalate our understanding to the justice of Jesus. It's at a whole other level. And it's similar to what Tim was saying earlier is that if, um, if, we're, if it's not sanctified by the Lord, justice can be very vengeful. And that causes the scales to keep tipping back and forth between, I have to repay this debt. I, I suffered violence, so I have to give violence. And we know, <clears throat> excuse me, we know what Jesus said about that, right? If you're going to live by the sword, what? You're going to die by the sword. So in order for justice to be effective in the, in the eternal Jesus model, forgiveness is really key. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that there are not gross in inequities in the world. There's a lot of unfairness in the world, okay? And that's because of sin, okay? And it could be that the sin in the hearts of the people with power leverage that power to take advantage of other people. And over and over in the Old Testament, God says, I hate injustice. I hate injustice. When Paul was debating with the, with the early church leaders about who could be a Christian, he was saying, it's not about being a Jew. It's not about being circumcised. It's about having faith in Jesus. And that's it. And that's what the whole Reformation was about. The just shall live by faith, not following a bunch of rules. It's not our ability to follow. The rules are great. We should follow them, yes, but that doesn't earn us our salvation, okay? So that's what I want to try to focus on. But also keep in front of you that as a church, we can't just sit by and say what a terrible problem that is. We have to also answer, what are we doing about it? What's the vision of the church? What has God showed you to help that change so that 20 years from now, you could look back on this region and say, wow, after that church came in, this shifted. They brought people in to do deliverance. They brought people in to do trauma healing. They, they helped fund the, the uh, crisis pregnancy center that we already talked about today with Lisa. There's five locations in the state of New Jersey where women can go and, 
and receive counsel about whether or not they should receive an abortion or not. Now, you could just stand outside an abortion clinic and scream at the people going in, couldn't you? But what about offering them an alternative? What about trying to love them into the kingdom instead of shame them? Which way would Jesus do it? Right, we know, what he, we know what Jesus would do. But that kind of eternal Jesus justice takes a lot of steps and a lot of commitment and a lot of love. So we want to have ministries that you can get your hands dirty in, if I could say it that way, right? Where you could volunteer and you could actually go there. Because as good as it is to write a check to a, to a cause that's wonderful to help people financially, something happens in you when you actually go there in person and you look at the people. Or like we've been doing this food pantry now down in Raritan called Feeding Hands. And Tuesdays, several volunteers have been going from the church. And I think you've probably heard David Torres talked about how he was able to pray with 100 people that were all receiving the, the food as they were coming through the lines. He would just say, hey, can, can we pray for you? And nobody said no. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Because if they are in that line, that means that they qualify to need help, and people that need help want prayer, don't they? Well, there's a lot of people in our area here that need help. Don't you agree with that? I hope you do. So there's a lot of things we could do, but we want to do what, what we feel the Lord is saying for us specifically to do. Um, I was looking up in the balcony, and there's a ministry to Brazil that we help support. Just stand up for a second, okay? That's Sonia and Dan Kenna up there, just so people can ask you questions if you if you are, aren't sure about what to do. But that's where Sonia is from. That's where Dan met Sonia when he was working down in Brazil. And they started, uh, they built a, a, a building, a home for young people down there that, that they were ministering to, right? That's just the grace of God that in what would have otherwise been a very poor village. Now, you and I may never get to go there. Maybe you will, but if we don't, it doesn't mean we still aren't contributing to what's going on there. And it's the Lord only. That's the only reason that that would happen is because of the Lord. So what's our position on justice as a church? It's got to be the justice of Jesus, which means there has to be forgiveness involved and there has to be an ability for redemption. <laughs> right? And this is my challenge to all of us is that one of the really glaring facts about our culture, but just not American culture, the whole world, is that the technology involvement in our daily lives is becoming overwhelming, isn't it? Yeah, yeah now that you could say, well, that's making us more efficient. Maybe. But the demand to get more work done is also increasing, isn't it? I mean, I, I hate to use these old-fashioned words like secretary, but when I first went into corporate America 35 years ago, executives had a secretary. What would that be called today? <laughs> Administrative assistant. You know, like there's, a, there's much nicer words than that, than that secretary, right? But they didn't mean anything by it. They just, whatever they did. But listen, now you have an iPhone. <laughs> you don't have an executive assistant, and you're never supposed to turn the iPhone off. Right? It's like 24-7 that you're, they're, you're expected to respond, at least in the world I live in. And here's the thing they say to you. Oh, you can't meet the obligation of this job? That's okay. We have other people that are willing to do this. <laughs> so they put this pressure on you that you've got to live this insane pace. And look, it goes all the way down to what used to be the jobs that you could do when you were in high school. Right? You could, be, you could check food out at the grocery store. You could stock shelves in the back. Those jobs are going away fast. And even the ones that are there require you to know how to use a computer because you can't even ring the food through anymore because it's all on scanners. And, and, and you have to just think of the people that don't have the same ability that we have to adjust with the times. And you have to say that's what the church is supposed to be here for. We're supposed to stand in the gap between poor kids in Brazil or people down at the Raritan Circle that have fallen on hard times or a young girl who's pregnant and going into a crisis pregnancy center probably scared out of her wits not knowing what's going to happen. And this is where we interface the kingdom of God with the kingdom of the world. And we say, this is different. And they might look at you and say, well, why would you do this? And you hopefully would say, because God did it for me. Right. The same way he forgave me I'm willing to stand in the gap and help other people move forward because, but for the grace of God, I'm going to need help again. And I'm sure glad that other people will be around to do that with me. 